This video is going to be a comprehensive analysis on an investment portfolio developed by a private equity firm. And that portfolio is called the Dragon Portfolio. The Dragon Portfolio totally challenges modern portfolio theory and invests money completely differently. You'll see later in this video just how well this Dragon Portfolio has performed in a 90 year backtest when compared to a traditional 60-40 portfolio. On top of that, due to recent performance, the private equity firm that put this portfolio together dubbed last year, 2020, the year of the dragon because their dragon portfolio ended up beating a traditional 60-40 portfolio by even more so than it typically does throughout history. We're gonna take a very detailed look into this dragon portfolio, exactly what it holds and how the performance has been compared to other investment strategies. But before we get into it, I have a quick favor to ask. I'm hoping that you'll either give this video a thumbs up or a thumbs down depending on if you actually enjoy watching this type of detail-oriented content. You leaving a like or a dislike will help me know if you wanna see similar videos on the channel in the future. I really appreciate any feedback you would leave. Now let's get into just what the heck this Dragon Portfolio really is. From my analysis on this, it looks like the primary objective of the Dragon Portfolio is to hold investments which carry very low historical correlations to one another, which as a general strategy, low correlated investments, I'm a fan of. There are several different reasons that it can be beneficial to hold investments that have very low correlations to one another, and these reasons can be illustrated and proved with some relatively simple algebra. Now there are plenty of other YouTube videos out there that discuss how the correlations of assets affect the total portfolio performance, so I'm not going to get into those details here. Just know that the Dragon Portfolio seeks to buy investments with very low correlations to one another. And for the statistics nerds out there who might care, multiple regressions were run on the handful of investments that the Dragon Portfolio uses, and the results of those regressions were utilized to decide on the weightings of each individual investment. The report that covers the Dragon Portfolio in detail that this video is sort of a summary of utilizes a common 60-40 portfolio for a lot of their comparisons. The idea of 60-40 portfolios sort of being a standard comes from Modern Portfolio Theory, or MPT. And if you're not familiar with what Modern Portfolio Theory is, it's basically an investment hypothesis that seeks to maximize the amount of returns given a certain level of risk that an investor is comfortable taking. MPT is by far the most common framework used when investing money today, and it's extremely easy to implement in today's financial market. Think of a Vanguard 2040 target date index fund or something like that. That's one extremely common example of a fund that uses Modern Portfolio Theory in its thesis. The Dragon Portfolio points out several issues with MPT in this common 60-40 portfolio and seeks to address them and improve on them. The firm who developed the Dragon Portfolio also often compares it to a risk parity strategy. Risk parity strategies are not all that common with retail investors, but they are utilized fairly often by institutions, with Ray Dalio being one of the most famous advocates of it. Was to think about uh, risk. The Dragon Portfolio also improves on some weaknesses of risk parity strategies, with the biggest relative improvement coming from the one area that causes the most issues with the risk parity strategy. But even with these claimed advantages, there are some downsides to the Dragon Portfolio that need to be considered as well. The Dragon Portfolio's theory of risk claims to correct a fatal flaw of conventional portfolios, and that is a dangerous over-reliance on stocks and bonds and the relationship between their performance. Big and small, many investors fail to recognize a pretty obvious fact. The last 40 years have been one of the most exceptional periods of time in stock and bond price growth in recorded financial history. The common 60-40 portfolio is dominated by the equity risk exposure, so it does relatively well in periods of market increases and very poorly in periods of market decline. The risk parity strategy I mentioned has performed more admirably over the last 90 year time period when back tested and it's averaged a 9.1% annual return. However, most of this return actually came between the period of 1984 to 2007 when treasury yields fell by more than 10% from like 14% to basically zero. You see the classic problem with the risk parity strategy is its over-reliance on returns generated by fixed income. It's just a highly weighted asset class in the portfolio. And with current yields between one and 2%, it seems far less likely that yields can fall another 10% to like negative eight or negative 9% over the next 40 years. So to adjust for this, if we look at the performance of the risk parity strategy over the past 90 years, but we look at periods of flat or rising interest rates, it results in a much lower average annual return of somewhere around 6%. Now, before we get into quoting a couple more performance figures from the study that the Dragon Portfolio is listed in, it is critically important to understand that when this study quotes those numbers during the time period tested, they are using volatility adjustments 
adjusted returns, not nominal investment returns like you'd see from a common ETF. They are taking that nominal or regular investment return number and then adjusting it up or down to if that asset class had posted an average standard deviation of 15% per year. For some investment strategies that have relatively low volatilities, this means that they are adjusting that number higher. And for other investment strategies that have higher than an annual 15% standard deviation, this study adjusts those numbers down. The firm doesn't give too much explanation as to why they felt the need to use these adjusted returns in their study. They just make mention to it in one blurb saying, the tables above show the conservative performance of each asset or portfolio applied to reach the 15% volatility target. Now I can't really say whether their use of these adjusted returns to make the 90 year comparisons is necessarily fair, but I will say two things about this. First, 15% is not all that different from the average annual volatilities of the five main investment categories that they use in the Dragon portfolio, so it's not like they're heavily distorting the numbers. However, most of the assets and investment strategies used in the Dragon portfolio probably do fall on the lower end there. They probably have average annual standard deviations of less than 15% which means that for the most part, they are adjusting their performance numbers upwards relative to other things like the common 60-40. All of this may sound like a bit of a technicality, but I wanna be 100% clear that we are not talking about actual posted investment returns that you might see on the internet or news. With all these facts considered, the portfolio has posted some very attractive investment returns over the 90 year back tested period compared to a couple of those other strategies. Now let's talk about the specific positions that the Dragon portfolio uses. First is equity linked at 24% and this one's really straightforward. It just refers to equity market exposures which you could get access to with any of your favorite stock market ETFs. Just know that the Dragon portfolio only utilizes US stocks for this equity allocation, not international stocks. Next is long volatility strategies at 21% of the portfolio and this is probably the most complex. Long volatility refers to actively managed strategies that have pretty exceptional performance when markets are unstable. It's a defensive strategy, it has pretty non-linear returns, and it can also provide for extra cash to reinvest in beat up stocks or real estate when markets are low. The key to those strategies is managing their own losses during rising markets though. The primary value of long volatility in the Dragon portfolio and almost every place it's utilized is the negative correlation during growth cycles of the economy and again, strong performance when things go south. This long volatility strategy is different from portfolio insurance, also known as tail risk hedging, which is maybe a more common option overlay strategy. This long volatility foregoes continuous hedging for more dynamic protection and also has lower costs because you're trading options less often. The study models this strategy by just buying equity market options, probably in the most common stock market ETFs. They buy an option in the current direction of the market up or down after a move of more than 5% during any rolling three month period. They also say that that strategy I just presented to you represents a very simple and likely less effective version of what active long volatility managers can actually do to a portfolio. It's important to note that they admit long volatility is not usually an impressive investment strategy by itself, but it can do great things when paired with other pieces of a puzzle, just like the forbidden one, Exodia. I've assembled all five special cards. Exodia, obliterate! And the last decade has actually been the worst 10 year period relative to any other decade during the 90 year back test for long volatility by itself. It's averaged a 6.8% loss per year over the last 10. This kind of makes sense considering how relatively consistent and consistently good stock markets have been over the last 10 years, avoiding the big crash, but then quick recovery from March of 2020. Third is the allocation to gold at 19%. They say that gold is one of the most critical assets because it protects against fiat devaluation. That to me sounds like a little bit of conspiracy but it could become a factor in our economy in the future, I suppose. It's a little known fact that gold has actually outperformed the average annual returns of any stock market over the last 50 years since Nixon delinked it from the value of our dollar. Again, it's really easy to get access to this in a portfolio. You could just use a common ETF. The next sleeve in the Dragon portfolio at 18% is commodity trend following. Commodity trend following as it's utilized here is in and of itself an entire trading strategy. It seeks to monetize the fluctuations of prices in various different commodities using technical and rules-based approaches. It simply buys a commodity when it is above its 50-day average and shorts a commodity when it is below its 50-day average. 
pretty straightforward. The study says that you could just access this strategy with a hedge fund, but it's very important to note that commodity trend following is going to give you much different returns than just investing in commodities. Using the latter option produces far less favorable results in the Dragon portfolio overall if you look at the back-tested 90-year time period. You can see the difference in those results on the screen now. The Dragon portfolio as a whole, when utilizing commodity trend following for this allocation of the portfolio, from 1929 to 2019 averaged a 10.1% annual return. The same Dragon portfolio using long commodity only rather than commodity trend following averaged a 0.5% annual return during the same 90 year period. They also note that with this commodity trend following strategy, one of the commodities they're buying is real estate, which when compared to all the other individual positions within this portfolio is actually the single best returner on its own over the 90 year period, posting an average annual return of 9.2%. I personally was kind of surprised to see those numbers from real estate as an asset class relative to everything else that this portfolio uses. Finally, number five, at 18% of the portfolio is fixed income. And to invest in fixed income, the Dragon portfolio utilizes, drum roll here, treasury bonds. That's it. You know the thesis, you know the components of the portfolio, now let's talk about implementation of this. Can real people actually use the Dragon portfolio? Right away, three of the five main investment strategies are really easy to get access to. You can just use some of the really commonly traded ETFs, at least here in the United States, to get the equity exposure, gold exposure, and treasury exposure. For the commodity trend following strategy, you're gonna have to be pretty up on technicals and following these different markets and watching the charts and prices of these to make your trading decisions. Then for the long volatility strategy, it could be especially difficult to actually invest in that. You're either gonna have to A, use a hedge fund, which most people can't get access to, or B, become an expert in options and derivative trading. And that is a very daunting task for most people. I know I wouldn't want to do it myself. So you can see that while it's not impossible, actually implementing this portfolio would pose its fair challenges. The study offers a pretty good conclusion, but it's kind of bragging as to why it just presented to you the facts that show that the Dragon portfolio is the best way to invest money ever. The point that I want to share is that the Dragon portfolio is a very different way to invest. It totally flips conventional investment allocation on its head. If anyone actually utilized this with their own dollars, in any given year, they would very likely receive returns and risk numbers that are drastically different from the common markets out there right now. But over a long period of time, if the next 90 years looks at least somewhat similar to the last 90 years, and you're okay with looking at these standard deviation adjusted returns that they use in the study, then yeah, the Dragon portfolio could potentially be one of the single most lucrative ways to invest. So there you have it. Thank you very much for sticking around to the end. If you could like this video and subscribe to the channel, both of those things help out and I really appreciate them. Leave a comment with any questions, send me an email if you have any specifics about yourself, and as always, thanks for watching.